Craigslist. Craigslist. Hello, Craigslist. 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 Yeah, tonight's a very special Craigslist. We're going to go to the Phoenix Craigslist Musicians Session. Why is it uh, special? A, well, let's see. We're going to find some people in here. I got a, a one in here that's a ringer <gasps> that I want to show you. And then a couple that I'm going to kind of revisit a a, a topic we've seen before. And, and then I got something going on. I'm going to audition for the local high school jazz band. Oh. And was, I got the requirements and stuff, and we'll see what that's like. And, and nice. I'm I I think I'll pass, but I think the point is <laughs> maybe somebody out there thinking like that can say, hey, it's pretty easy. Even that goofy guy can do it. Sure. So Craigslist, the Phoenix Musicians section, is the group where all these goofballs try and reinvent things. You and I once talked about uh, the companies that uh, come at you with the uh, call now, hurry, seats are limited, mm-hmm. all that stuff, and you called it selling scarcity. Mm-hmm. Like it's something you remembered from business school, and that's sure. a topic they said. That's a marketing ploy, weird little thing, and all that kind of stuff. So here's one that, it, to me, is this, and it reminds me of a, a thing that I'm a little bit more familiar with: EDM, pop, bands, metal, jazz, R and B, country, hip hop, gospel, and more. Las Vegas. Okay. Those are all words separated by commas, but no spaces. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Arizona. We are looking for the best of the best in every genre to showcase in our August 25-26 Artists Empowerment Music Conference 2018. Oh, boy. So the conference is in August is what they're saying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, um, again, it's some weird-ass kind of punctuation stuff going on. It's like, uh, let's just put may capitalize this, but let's not capitalize Almost this. Almost like it was in a different language, and they translated it online mm-hmm. and then, like, yeah, copied like and pasted. The title of their event, you know, Artist Empowerment Music Conference, those should all be capitalized. Mm-hmm. Three of those words are, but not conference. Mm. So that's, you know, it's things like that. And then, of course, next line, what's it say? Reps are on standby, so call oh, us now. now. Space is limited. Mm-hmm. All right, call us when? Now. Better call right, right now. now. Come join us in Las Vegas for three days of live music performances. It, that's August 25 and 26. Three days of live music performances. Industry networking. Well, I don't know, but it's three days compressed into just sure, those two like days. Sure, festival at the same time. August 25 and 26. That's mm. not three days. That's what I'm getting at there. Oh, <laughs> I see. <laughs> they did weird math. I see. Music performances, industry networking, educational seminars, and much more. We are on a first come. First serve. That's it, 30. So you we better hurry and call these people maybe tomorrow. No, now. Mm-hmm. Well, don't wait because it'll be gone. Your spot will be filled. This reminded me of, and whether it's the same or not, I don't know, but I'm sure it's the same kind of concept. I had a student once that uh, he was a pretty good guitarist and he had a band and uh, they were all pretty tight and all that kind of stuff. And he was doing some serious good work here and stuff. And he says he got... uh, he was going to the seminar in Las Vegas, mm-hmm. and he said it, there's a lot of them going on, but this one was different. They don't just take everybody. They want you to audition for the seminar because their idea is, well, we got a lot of really good info to give, and we don't want it to give, you know, wasted on people that are slackers. Mm-hmm. So we're going to get you guys that are real serious about it. Mm-hmm. So that's appealing, of course, to the people's with the pocketbook and they're sure. saying that so this guy not thinking about it, he got hooked up into it mm-hmm. and i asked him the details of it <clears throat> and it was 60 bands he said they were limiting it to 60 bands it seems like quite a lot and you could have two people from your band go mm-hmm. and it was 1900 dollars for the two of you okay so your band comes up with 1900 bucks and you go to the send two of your guys to the right. thing in Las Vegas right. that's the, the the theory you know and that you learn this stuff and bring it back and teach the guys and all that sure so <clears throat> doing the quick math it goes 114 grand is what this company is going to bring in from mm-hmm. these 60 bands and 114 grand spent in Las Vegas on a multi-purpose room for 2 days i'm thinking 
couple thousand dollars maybe mm-hmm. at the most per day including the bagels and stuff you know the food and everything sure. plus they call, they call them breakouts sure the, the restaurant i mean the 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 hotel and the, all the restaurants and everybody they're going to give you a special oh yeah here we'll give a coupon so you come on over to uh uh, Hard Joe's Rock Crab Cafe, Chef, yeah. yeah, and you can get uh, chicken nuggets for only thirty-seven dollars. We'll mark them down for your guys instead of fifty-two dollars. Right. That kind of stuff. So, right, they're, clearly they're working on that selling scarcity. That term that you taught me last time we read these mm-hmm. ball kind of guys. So, and more than one way, this one's screaming at me, going, "Geez, come on! I can't spell. I can't." Even in my own title of my own thing, I can't sure. use grammar. I can't really figure out how three days fits into two, two days. days. Yeah, sure. Uh, okay. By chance, did you like look up the title of that seminar? No. Like, I was just curious. Like, hmm. it just seems like if you're, you know, going to the trouble to put in an ad, of course, it's free, but looking for people, you at least uh, make your ad appealing in a grammatical way (laughs) i would well yeah that's the point is i think that if they were legit they would Mm -hmm. and they're not they're Mm -hmm. but want your money so we don't really care we can't really spell the industry networking educational seminars you need an educational seminar from lisa (laughs) about the comma (laughs) you need an english class goofballs okay (laughs) here's this next one let's see what oh here's two in a row that that kind of interested me this one says it's real short top 40 old school latin r&b funk rock band seeks vocals keys guitar okay all right (laughs) a lot of genres and stuff whatever but here's the the fun part we are a three-piece looking to start a top 40 and old school band that repeat those styles. Mm -hmm. We're three piece looking to start a top 40 old school band. We're looking for vocals, keyboard player and guitar player. So what three pieces do they already have? Isn't that three pieces? (laughs) Right. Uh, Maybe they're drums, bass and rhythm guitar, or maybe like us. We're going over three. (laughs) Right. I I guess I kind of got the idea that, you know, if you're saying we are a three, are you saying I'm a one piece and I want two people? Right. Are you saying we're three now and we'd like three more? We, that word we, you and the mouse in your pocket. That's right. what they say in the <laughs> South. I've never understood what that <laughs> meant. And he tags it with weird. What does it mean? I don't know. It oh, means oh, yeah. we. When people say we. I'm going to have to look in my heavens to Betsy book. When, uh, like this guy here, if he's, well, we are a three piece, you know, we, who are you talking Suit. about? <laughs> We're just in the beginning stages of getting a new group together. Mm. I could tell that. Yeah. In my because I'm a musical genius. Of That's course. right. Okay. Now here's the next one which is very close to the concept of that these people with great math skills. Bass player wanted. Hi, we are looking for a bass player. We are a guitarist, drummer and female lead singer. Okay. We're all older. Our female vocalist has excellent stage presence, and we will remain three-piece. Meaning like we can function without the bass if you don't mix in with us? Or what exactly does that mean? We'll remain three-piece, but we're looking for a bass player to add to our three-piece. There's, see, right. there's another yeah. slide rule another thing Another math problem. challenge moment. We've been Anything together else? for over, oh, how many years? Three. Three. <laughs> Son of a gun. <laughs> And only want to gig out once or twice a month. Only want to gig out once or twice a month. Okay. Now, look at that. If you add twice plus one, that's three, isn't it? There's a three numerology once thing. Once or twice, that's right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and when you add, when you double the threes, you get six, six, mm-hmm. six, baby. It's <gasps> devil worshiping oh stuff. Oh, my gosh. It's 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 code. We disclosed it right here on Saint the Lumpy Worshipper. and Lisa show. <laughs> we currently have two venues that we play regularly. And we each make a hundred dollars. Two regularly. Okay, so that means two in one month. That's more than once. Let's let's sum so far. <laughs> we're we are a three piece. We got a guitar, drummer, female lead singer. They threw in in a weird spot. Our female vocalist has excellent stage presence. Okay. 
but that means she's hot. They are a three piece and they've got a place that makes more than you would expect a hundred dollars each regularly, whatever that might mean. It doesn't matter. But the point is they're making good money. Is there some reason why you'd want to dilute that and add a fourth player? Now you'd only make seventy five dollars. Right. But, like but, don't bro don't what don't broke. Don't break what's not broken. Sure. I mean, <laughs> the the venue's paying you three hundred dollars, mm -hmm. and if you've got three people, you each earn a hundred dollars. If if you had six people, you'd each earn fifty dollars and mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. So don't bring the choir. You know, bring three people. That's the whole point that of the all the DJs and stuff. They could now play gigs. That's what pissed off a lot of musicians. Is the, the first of all, when MIDI keyboards came along and the keyboard guys could play all the trumpets and everything on their mm -hmm. keyboards instead of just piano. Right, just put a bunch Suddenly of trumpet all players the other out of trumpet players out, out of, of the job. That's right. So, all right. So, oh, here's one of those uh, those stingers that I kind of like. The hours are great, and the load in is about five feet from your vehicle. <laughs> Like, why do people hear, oh, mm -hmm. you know what? I was, uh, they didn't post anything about the load-in, so I'm not going to call. Man, I had to go. Yeah. All right, so the the hours are great, uh, the, like always. Those aren't real hours. You, you That'd gotta, be like from two to five, so I can be home for dinner. Yeah, you got to <laughs> deal with what's real hours in, in entertainment. It's not from the time the song starts. You know, it's the time, the whole day and everything and all that. We're not real big on making things complicated with heavy subwoofers and miking instruments. Ooh. We value our health. Okay, so five feet from the stage, that's good. Mm -hmm. Old folks and walkers maybe or something, I know. We want somebody who lives on the west side like us. As we feel this is realistic, all of our gigs will be on the west side, but we never say about anything. But we never, oh, but we never say never about oh, anything. Sure. So for some reason, they want me to live on the west side. Sure. I'm not sure why that would make it. If, if I show up, isn't that okay? Right. So if you're a shitty bass player and you, uh, but you live on the west side. Yeah. That's okay. We'll take you. Hmm. But we're going to remain three pieces. If you're going to pay me a hundred bucks, that's a, a pretty good wage for a hired gun. So I'll drive from the east side. Thank mm -hmm. you. No problem. That's, and like, let me right. decide that, you know. Yeah. What's it to you? It's Where I live. Four o'clock is when you need me. So if I have to leave at 345 or 245, what's the difference to you? I mean, what <laughs> if my, my residence is actually officially in the west side, but like whatever, my girlfriend lives mm. across town, but you know? You have to see your water bill, sir. To yeah. know where you live. <laughs> exactly. Can I see your utility bill, please? Uh, we are a variety band doing some classic country and classic rock. We play songs that appeal to our own age group, and we don't limit ourselves to any genre or style. This is the same app, correct? Yes, it is. Okay. And they, they'd never mention an age group, I don't think. If we like it, we play it. We jump from Tanya Tucker to Culture Club, Patsy Cline to Pink, the Dixie Chicks to One Republic, and Eddie Rabbit to Selena Gomez. Interesting. That is interesting, and that's a very good technique. They didn't just mention, you know, like six bands that were all exactly alike. Sure. Each one of those, like, I don't really know. Patsy Cline to Pink, that's pretty far. Mm -hmm. You know, Tanya Tucker to Culture Club, that's pretty far. And that's a good marketing thing, I think. If this sounds fun, please email or text, and we can set up an audition. Thank you, 30. 30. Mm -hmm. mm, interesting. So that's kind of weird. I, don't, I, I just don't understand their concept of this three-piece turning it into a four-piece I don't know what they're doing. And right. it was just funny that I found two of these in the same couple of days. Right. The same. Hey, maybe they hired the same person to write it. Mm, and that know. person did not pass like second grade math. If I lived close enough to central Phoenix, maybe I could drive to this one for the west side. Right. And then the other one, wherever they're at, I don't know. But good luck to you folks. That's right. Let's look at the big picture of it. They said they're looking for a bass player. They're now guitar drummer and female lead singer. It would make sense to get a bass player. Sure. Absolutely. I, I like that idea. Yeah, sure. So, or keyboard player, and then just get rid of the guitarist to the drummer. <laughs> oh, okay. And it'll be a bonus if you can sing. They always say that, right. don't they? It would be helpful if you could sing. Hmm. Well, here's the ringer and let me get a drink of water. You and I read these Craigslists every week, and we come up with these genres that you and I have never heard of. Mm -hmm. That's not surprising to me. We're geezers compared to these kids. You are. 
<laughs> and and you're you're all hip into the gray metal yeah. zoom pop fuzz. <laughs> so I said, well, let me just see if I can combine the concept of of what these kids keep saying and the concept of what a professional musician would present. Mm-hmm. And I'll plug this into a Craigslist scam. Okay. Not scam. I mean, it's a fake thing. I posted right. it to Craig's. I'm not scamming anybody. Here it is. Paid. Post-disco glam neopop fuse jazz light gray metal project. Nice. Northeast Chandler. Nice. Seeking tight experimental rhythm section. Bass, drums, guitar. Plus rapper, singer. Latin percussion. For my musical project that combines all the genres above. Oh, Fusion, Ooh. if you will. Oh, God, my favorite. Of 80s with today, peppered with bits and pieces of this and that genre from everywhere in between. Oh. I'm the keyboards, arranger, director. I typically play a suitcase Rhodes. That is a style of electric piano that was popular in the 70s. I'm glad you clarified that. It's a Fender Rhodes electric piano. And it, once you've heard it, you'll know it's like, babe, I'm leaving, must be on my way. That's a Fender mm-hmm. uh, Rhodes. Mm-hmm. A suitcase Rhodes is a, a little bit smaller. You could carry it sort of like a suitcase. Like a suitcase. <laughs> so when somebody reads that, they go, hey, well, this guy, he's kind of knows what he's talking about. I can arrange to standard notation lead sheets for your instrument. Mm. So if you're one of those, whatever, those horns and all that stuff, those guys that are used to parts, here, I'll arrange and give you parts. Mm-hmm. I'm the arranger, director. I'm going to give you parts. See all the one, the professional musician part I'm trying to mm-hmm. overlay into this other junk. Sure. My compositions, your hired gun. Your input is welcome. Your creative interpretation is desired, but I'm not looking to showcase others' compositions. Mm. I'd really like to find readers who can play, not dreamers who want to forge their own path. Mm -hmm. Nice. You recognize all the terms? I'm using real terms. These people forge your own path. That's A.J. Odd Neal. I formed and played in the punk band Fork Your Sister in the 1980s (laughs) in El Monte, California. Oh, gosh. And the novelty a cappella vox group, The Shit Tones from Santa Monica, (laughs) also in the 80s. Nice. I played... I played bass in the gay bear band, Tom, Dick, Harry, in Palm Springs in the late 80s. <laughs> I'm not gay, but I look the part and have no problem with it, and they needed a bass player. <laughs> Here's some of my influences. The Rangers, Los Wynaticos, Elvis, David Wilcox, The Doors, Plat Funk from 12, Beatles, Led Zepp, Space, Truman Wonderstar, Earth, Wind, and Fire, Alex and Tony, Alex White without Tony, Glenn Campbell, <laughs> Twisted Sister, Daytona and the Fivers, Jay and the Americans, The Pill, The Curse, The Cure, The Catch, The Rise, The Fall, <laughs> Cat Bust on the Hill, Easter's Eleven, Morbid Steam, Patrick McGonaghy, Lee Rittenauer, Canned Heat, Plunge, Mix 40, Crystal Method, Dumas Walker, Alanis Morissette, McPherson James, B.B. King, Eric Clapton, The Rembrandt, Smokewood, Immortal Creation, The Huck Fins, The Platters, Sequestered, Time Driven by Darkness, Pat Boone, The Letterman, Taylor Swift, Glenn Miller, Ozzy. Pat Boone, nice. I don't do much country. (laughs) Contact me and let me know your rates. 30. Did you actually enter this or you just... Yeah. (gasps) You did. Yeah. And did you get any calls? I got one one thing and he said... Call me or something, you know. It didn't call didn't me. didn't give me any info. It was like call me, you know, whatever. Now, if you want to, the list of the influences, some of them are real. Some mm-hmm. Elvis, David Wilcox, mm-hmm. at the Doors. Sure. I, of course, I had to list the Beatles, Led Zepp. Everybody does that, no matter sure. what their thing is. Did you remember Dumas Walker? <laughs> the the yeah. dumbass Walker, the whoever yes. they like, some band, but not the version with Dumas right. Walker. Right. So I, he was there. Then I listed down here. <clears throat> Smokewood and Immortal Creation. Those were two garage bands I was in in junior high school. Nice. The Huck Finns, that was a, a a band I did at Disneyland once where they hired us to dress in bib overalls and mm-hmm. sit on hay bales and sure, play banjos. Like and th- yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And nice. We, we had fake 
your teeth, you know, the <gasps> cut out really? so you look like a hillbilly oh, that, thing. It's not, they had one there called the hillbillies. Oh, it's, it's it great. It was great. Mm, so I'm just making up stuff. And then some of these, I don't know, I'm making cat bust on the hill. I, that sounded pretty good. Mm -hmm. And I had to have a normal name. So I said, Patrick McGonaghy. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know what that is, but it's just a name. I sure. just made it up. So. Sure. So I don't know. I got one, one thing. One call. Not very. No call. Nobody I calls. Like it, though. Come on, calls. We don't get calls. Because it said specifically, I'm looking for musicians who can play, not that's right dreamers. Because mm -hmm. most of the ads on Craigslist are, you know, guys, gals trying to forge their own path. And you specifically said, right. I don't want that. Oh, most guys, yeah, they sure because are. they, that's you know. Right. These uh, dreamers, they probably already were reading the ad and were feeling like their creativity was being crushed mm -hmm. mm. right away. And so th that's an interesting spot, I think, in in a, a musician, and particularly a young. That's all the Craigslist that I got, but mm -hmm. th that was a good leap into this other thought. The when those kids, those dreamers, when they start seeing that other stuff that they they can't do that they have no idea what i'm talking about mm -hmm, sure their immediate reaction is oh that's that's crappy music i don't want to do that sure you know daytona and the fivers there is no such thing as daytona right. and the fivers right. but, but you know they're convinced that that's the reason there's a reason why they can't do it and that is they don't like it mm -hmm. which isn't true at all the reason is they can't do it mm -hmm. they don't know how to play the or, you instrument. know, they might not even, like, know what a lead sheet is. They're like, oh, oh I don't yeah. know, lead sheet. Oh. And so instead of saying, oh, well, if I learned how to do a lead sheet, maybe I could get a job with this guy and he'd pay me. Sure. Instead of doing that, they go, I don't need no lead sheet, man. I'm in my creativity and all that kind of junk. So that's a really common thing. And I, I think it's more in music than any other kind of, like, performing avocation or vocation. Mm -hmm. And it's that. I want to be a musician, but the minute there's something that's difficult, I I don't just get I certainly don't get challenged by it. I don't see a lot of that. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that sounds like fun. I could be challenged by it and learn that and get better, and then I could play like that guy. Mm -hmm. Immediately they'll go, I don't like that guy's playing. Mm -hmm. That guy's, oh, yeah, you know. So that's kind. Of, I don't think. Like acting kids do that if there is such a thing. Are there kids like that grow up and they want to be actors and mm -hmm. stuff? You know, do they go, Whoa, I don't like so and so, or you know, I don't really know how to equate that sure. to other kind of performing things. It's such a, I mean, I guess being a musician is, is such a unique craft and also so somehow so personal that if a musician of any sort is feeling like they are hmm. challenged or they can't do it or it's something they haven't. You know, they are just, you know, hands off. Okay. I'm but, not, you know, that's a can't do it. great point. That You said the craft part of it. That's what we heard from Opie. Remember, mm -hmm. Ron Howard was Absolutely. talking about that. Knowing your craft, and, and, and that's what I'm always saying here in one language or another. I'm saying that if you don't know how to play the darn thing, then, of course, you're not going to like any other style. <laughs> you could probably can't even play the style that you like, that you think, you know, your shoegazer thing or whatever. Sure. But you just want to think that you can, or I don't really know how that works mm -hmm. in a sub-teen's mind. But the, the idea that people that get good at anything, not just music, but are challenging themselves with things that they don't have a handle on yet. I don't know how to read and write. Okay, I'm going to learn how to read. I don't know how to walk. I don't mm -hmm. know how to breathe. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe you had to slap me on the butt a little bit to get me doing that when I was born. Or what about, say, like an adult that moves to, well, you know, the United States or to a place where English is not their primary language. Mm -hmm. And, you know, gosh, it would be so, you know, I mean, both you and I, I mean, English is our first language. We're like, you know. It's just sure. ingrained in us. Mm -hmm. But to be an adult, it'd be like you or me moving to France and you know, we're only going to speak French. I mean, it would be so hard. Well, everybody thinks you're French. It, yes. It's, it's the oui, oui. strangers from Minnesota walk up to you <laughs> in, in Versailles and say, pardon me, could you Versailles. help me? Yes. Um, I did just get done, got done watching Jacques Papine. Oh, well. Yeah. Bonjour. <laughs> you know, uh, adults, 
there's this thing about kids and adults that they teach in, in teacher school. Mm-hmm. And it's like the only thing I remembered from the developmental psych part because I really want to just play my instrument. Mm-hmm. But the idea is that kids, <clears throat> kids are not experts at anything mm-hmm. yet. They haven't been alive long enough to do anything. You have been doing things like driving a car longer than these kids have been alive mm-hmm. sure. in, the, in the Craigslist group. <clears throat> and so we think nothing of it to, to drive a car or anything that we do. Kids think everything of everything they do. A very young kid, if you just throw the ball, Mm -hmm. it's just like the biggest thing in the world. And they're just laughing and going crazy and they're jumping all over. And and then as they get older, it takes a little bit more than just throwing the ball. And so little kids are amazed every time something happens. And they could pick up a, a... your little girl gets on the drum set over there sometimes. Mm-hmm. just goes bang, bang. And you know what? God damn it. She's pretty good. <laughs> I better keep her banging away I on that know. thing. But she'll reach over there and do a little thing. And then you can just see she's going, hey, I like that. Mm-hmm. Adults, on the other hand, they've been doing a lot of things really well for decades. Not just like because I'm a brain surgeon or a realtor or whatever, but you've been walking and driving and, and typing and things like that, interacting with human beings and whatever for a long time. And you're really good mm-hmm. adult at all those things. Suddenly you take up pole dancing <laughs> and right. you're, you're not really good at it. And you, you look at that and you go, I could get really good at this, but it would take, well, gee, how long did it take me to get good at, you know, driving? driving? Yeah. yeah. It took 30 years or something. And so it's, it's a weird scale that we look at it as adults. We always feel like we could never get there. Something to be said for a rote action or an action that is required that because it's required becomes rote. Like mm. here, you know, in Phoenix, it's, we don't have a lot, a lot of mass transportation. So you're going to drive. You're going to learn how to drive. Yep. And you know how it is. You've been driving and you're like, well, I knew where I was going, but I don't really remember it path mm-hmm. you know because you just do it but and you do it that way because you have to because mm-hmm. it's a required function exactly. walking qu- required function driving mm-hmm. required function you know and so you get good at it because you have to do it over and over and over mm-hmm. so i wonder if uh you know a musician if if somebody this would be a great study they were every day they were made to practice you have to do this it's a required function you know how good would you be mm-hmm. Well, maybe that's uh, Berkeley. Mm-hmm. You know, any sure. music school. They're, you're made. I mean, we don't cut your head off, but if you know, if you want to graduate, you practice. Mm-hmm. That's your thing. What? Uh, where do you suppose that falls with the adult learner now? When you say, uh, "Okay, well, here I am. I'm going to go take swing dancing." Mm. Perfect. And, uh, I've, I've never done that, and. Uh, you did, didn't mm-hmm. you? Yes. Yeah. Both and so and I. that was something I assume that you were, well, you kind of took dance in college or something, but one way or another, you were. Girls are always dancers, no matter what. Is that Girls right? are just kind of like, every, every girl yeah, likes baby. to, you know, dance and mm-hmm. have there fun. There she is now on and... stage number two. It's Lisa, <laughs> businessman's lunch tomorrow at noon, all the shrimp you can eat. Mm-hmm. But in this day and age, I mean, it used to be that. It was part of our culture for men to learn to couples dance as well, and we don't have that so much anymore. But oh. yes, uh, well, in this day and age, I, I think we we kind of get oh, I'm going to brag on homosexuals or something now, and I I don't dislike homosexuals. I just <laughs> I just don't like what because only gay dudes dance. No, what they're going to complain about is that that kit there. <laughs> I'm going to clear all this up in a minute, gay people. <laughs> You know, a lot of places are no longer having like father and daughter dances mm. because it's a, the, the gender choice thing and stuff. And my eight year old chooses to be the uh, whatever and all that kind of stuff. Mm. Here's my thing about gays. Screw who you want. Love who you want. Marry who you want. I just don't understand being in a parade with a rainbow colored wig. <laughs> How does that help me or somebody like me who doesn't really understand the idea of enjoying another man's penis? <laughs> You know, I don't get you that. You said enjoying another man's penis on our podcast. Uh, well, you know. <laughs> you hear that, folks? <laughs> it's late night. 
<laughs> you know, so I don't really, if, don't if somebody if were that. averse to that, you know, right. like the extremely religious or whatever, <laughs> how would being in a parade with a rainbow wig and acting real swishy, how would it help those people feel? Like, oh, I guess those people are okay after all. Right. No, they're just going to think you're goofier. I guess, so, um, gosh, I don't know. I, I just Maybe don't just get like it, permission to be flamboyant and that that's okay instead of your stuffy tie, suit and tie every day. I don't know. I, I kind of <laughs> get it like it's the. You know, we dare you to not like us because we're kind of, yeah, like so overly weird. boisterous. Like, it's just like kissing in public. I don't want to see you kiss your husband in public. <laughs> I don't care PDA, about your PDA. gender, but it's, yeah, it's in the line at the grocery store. I, you know, I see guys grab their girlfriend's butts and stuff <laughs> while they're kissing, and I'm going, hey, you know, because <laughs> I'm, th- I'm kind of thinking, I'm going to stand over here like I'm getting a quick bar, you know, a, a Nestle's thing. <laughs> cool. And and when he stops grabbing her butt, I can just comp a feel. She'll never know the difference. <laughs> and then I'll turn around and then they'll nice. go, oh, was it that 60-year-old man? It couldn't have been that. No, I don't know. And they'll get the elbow to the face. You better watch out. I might. I'm not telling it. would <laughs> be a felony. Anyways, back to dancing. You know, dancing. What were you going to say well, about, it, oh, if an adult took swing dancing? Yeah, I see. I wouldn't be good at it right away. Oh, no. And I would, th- th- we probably get this trade off in dancing because it's probably fun mm-hmm. if you can allow yourself to, to the fun part of it. Um, so you're dancing around. Oh, you probably even uh, get some endorphins and stuff going, you know, because oh, you're sure. exercising and all that. Absolutely. And so, whatever, all that kind of positive gizmos going on in your brain and your chemistry and everything. So. That's probably a little trade off on that, but you're not a great dancer like the teacher. You know, oh, when you yeah. watch them flowing around, yeah, sure. they're gorgeous and everything. So, uh, but I don't think you look at it down the road like saying, oh, God, it, it would be an endless thing for me to get that good. You're just kind of having a good time dancing. Sure, yeah. And you're learning a little something, maybe. You're not worried about the end product. Sure. And we kind of do that in music, I think. We don't allow ourselves in a casual setting to enjoy so much the the mere production of the music for the next split second. Mm-hmm. The one note I'm singing right now or playing on my instrument. And, you know, we get so caught up in the presentation of the thing and do the people like me. And uh, what did you say one time? I think the people thought I was fat. <laughs> You know, we worry about all that. And I thought my, I had some pepper in my tea. It's my fly open, all that kind right. of stuff. And so it's a tough deal. So adults are different than, than kids when they learn. So when you're thinking about your kid taking guitar lessons, in this case, when we're talking about Craigslist usually, that's probably a lot different than the concept of you, mom, dad, taking voice lessons or guitar lessons mm-hmm. or any kind of lessons mm-hmm. maybe you know uh, like i said uh, oil painting or something uh, mm-hmm. uh, fencing some of them are so mm-hmm. weird out like fencing or polo or something that it's not like you would assume you were ever going to get good you know hey what Golf. are you doing well i'm taking uh pole vaulting mm-hmm. sure. oh, really <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah i'm up to 19 feet now no you're not really i mean you know <laughs> that wouldn't be very logical to assume that you're gonna uh, you know break bruce jenner's record or something like that sure by the way oh bruce what what's his name brucey baby uh uh, caitlin boy you know those pictures when you see like uh, like whoever actress that's real gorgeous and now she's old and they caught her at 7-eleven with no makeup and stuff oh gosh yeah the paparazzi oh they're like look at a good one yeah now (laughs) we're looking at caitlin the same way Ooh. You know, if a beautiful woman gets ugly when she gets old and wrinkly and doesn't have makeup and is at Seven Eleven, imagine what a former guy right. does. Right? Yeah, that would just be. Yeah, and all be the tough. plastic starts to shift and everything. Yeah. <laughs> it's like the bad boob jobs, you know, that girls that have like square mm-hmm. boobs. Right. You can kind like of totally you see on the you go, yeah. wait a minute, what? <laughs> right. Are you like smuggling something from the border <laughs> or whatever? All right. So, so kids need to learn at a different kind of approach than adults adults need to approve things academically intellectually sure and they bring all of their sort of learned bad habits yes and and thoughts the kids don't have the the capability of that kids can't think intellectually so to speak i'm not saying they're dumb but they don't have the you know the experience much freer back and so uh adults the fatal part of it is when we 
only remain in that intellectual thing. And you've heard me talk about this before with those guys that, that have owned a guitar for a million years. Stop me when this reminds me of someone you're in love with mm -hmm. and doesn't <laughs> or really practice or, so or something. Yeah. <laughs> right. And, you know, and so they're, they think of it intellectually really good, but that doesn't make you any better. Mm -hmm. So you should probably lose a little bit once in a while. I'm not saying stop being intellectual about it, but I'm saying, Flip over to the dark side. Right. The, yeah, you have to find a way thing. to put away all of the crap in your head. Your, mm -hmm. You know, that, you know, intellect has gotten you far in the world, and it usually has to do with work and money. Mm -hmm. um, you now know. you're moving your fingers. Right. And That's now amazing. just put all of that aside and just play your guitar. And again, I'm not a golfer, but I'm pretty sure that the best golfers in the world aren't the guys who think the most about it. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> it's yeah. It's the guys who play the most. Right. Or, you know, the um, in uh, baseball, you know, a guy will be in like a, a hitting slump. And, you know, his coach are just, don't think about it so much. Just, you know, go out there and just That's right. hit a home run, dude. Mm -hmm. I said, well, you know, what you should do, you should clear your mind. Why don't you go to downtown Scottsdale, rent a hooker, buy some cocaine, get in a fight, <laughs> right. stab somebody. You'll right. be in jail, but you'll still draw the $30 million that we're going right. to give you this sure. year. But you won't have to work and you won't worry about your knee anymore. Right. And okay. we'll bail you out and mm -hmm. you'll come back no off the like bench that. and then you'll hit a home okay. run. You need a new uh, uh, limo, anything? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. So. All right. So if kids are going to learn how to do this, one of the things that is going to be different, I think, for kids versus adults, if you went out and took guitar lessons now as an adult, you probably wouldn't have a any particular goal in mind versus if you were a high school junior and thinking about going to Berkeley in a year and a half and you were going to major in jazz guitar, commercial guitar, mm -hmm. or horn, or trumpet, or whatever, um, that's a whole different thing. You're going to do a lot of auditioning. You're going to audition to get into cl into school. Mm -hmm. You're going to audition every semester at the jury. Remember, you got to mm -hmm. play for the selected faculty to, to show that you've learned something last semester. You're going to get a job. Mm -hmm. And you're going to audition for that. Sure. Um, you know, so it's never going to stop. You're going to audition when you go down that track. And you and I have read more than one audition. They are amazing close to each other. They all seem to kind of want the same thing. Mm -hmm. Here's another one that I've found. This is a, this is actually a friend of mine um, has a, a kid that is going to challenge this audition. It's a local high school and it's their jazz band which uh, was, would sometimes be called a stage band mm -hmm. in uh, arrangement terms. Meaning like not the marching band. That's correct. Okay. Uh, it's, uh, you and I talked about it once when we were dealing with uh, arranging, and I said uh, they'll give you a score in uh, maybe piano mm -hmm. notation, and you are supposed to arrange it for a stage band mm. with the trumpets, trombones, uh, sure. the saxophones, and a rhythm section. Sure. So you'd need to know what a stage band was. Exactly. So <laughs> stage band, jazz band is kind of a synonymous name for each other. It's like the, the, the old-time band on this Tonight Show, it's, sure. uh, that sort of thing. It's sort of like Glenn Miller's sort of bands, but smaller. <gasps> I love a little Glenn bit smaller, Miller. not quite. I love so, it when you the, say Glenn Miller. yeah, I knew you. I know you like those. So you if I ever love get Big another ben. boy dog, I'm gonna name him Miller. No, I'm gonna name him Glenn Miller, and he's gonna go by Miller. Good idea. <laughs> yeah. So the, here's this local jazz band, and <clears throat> the, uh, the the friend of mine with the kid, he was asking me about the the kid plays saxophone, the, mm -hmm. probably the most popular jazz instrument, I think. Mm -hmm. And he says, uh, "I've got this audition sheet." This thing that shows what we need to do. And he needed a couple help on what a couple of these things meant and mm -hmm. everything. So I have the sheet here tonight. And, and so I said, let's, let's ask Lisa to read them mm -hmm. and I will do them uh, as much as I can here. And I will do what is required on here. And we'll, we'll note that what's going on here is exactly, I think the same requirements for Berkeley sure, and uh, across the street, the Boston conservatory, and and every one of these audition points that we've ever read it contains almost exactly this stuff. So uh, from one of the local high school bands here in Phoenix, Lisa, would you uh, read all four, all of the A7 or whatever they are? Let's sure, see what's and then going we'll on. read it with them. Yeah. Jazz band. Four or more major scales, two octaves up and down the scale. Mm -hmm. Four or more minor scales, 
two octaves up and down the scale. Mm -hmm. Chromatic scale, two octave minimum, up and down the scale. Mm -hmm. Concert B flat blues scale. And improvisation to the B flat blues scale. One prepared selection of a jazz chart of your choice. A sight reading selection of a jazz chart to be given at the time of the audition. Hmm. I think. 30. Point for point. (laughs) Thank (laughs) you. Isn't that exactly what what Berkeley and all them have? Yes. um, Maybe the scale's a little different, but uh, play blues. They all said play blues. mm -hmm. uh, Improvise on the blues and do a jazz, do a chart of your choice. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, even the classical people, same thing. Remember the vocal people? Mm-hmm. Do one in French, one in Italian, one mm-hmm. in German, Gosh. all that kind of stuff. They give you the exact requirements. And, and so this one is for a jazz saxophone player uh, in this case. And they broke it down. If you were a guitarist, they would have something else. And they have a bass player and a drummer, whatever, and different instruments. So they're pretty much all the same. They're going to ask you to do the same thing. If you were going to audition for the orchestra, and you played clarinet, they'd ask you to play the same things. And uh, yeah, so not each these things. Each instrument is yeah. responsible for mm-hmm. the same thing. And there's there's typical pieces that are going to be real telling of your ability to play. If you can play this Beethoven's thing or this uh, clarinets, they always want you to play Rhapsody in Blue. They play this smear. That's that. That thing. It's not, not hard. You can learn it in a couple of weeks when you're a. a High school clarinet player. If you it's, it's no problem. Yeah. When you have to think about it a lot. Right. It's a very intellectual thing to think about. No, it's not. It's moving two hands like that really mm-hmm. slow. It's called a smear, actually. It's when you're drawing your fingers off the holes on the clarinet slow enough that they don't do, 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 do. It goes, it squeaks right. its way up. All right. So the the points in the audition are nearly all the same. And for all the different schools, college and high school and every place else, Mm -hmm. it would be the same if you were going to go audition for the Tonight Show Orchestra or anything up and down like that. So let's take them one at a time. Let's see what goes on. What's the first one? Four or more major scales, two octaves up and down the scale. All right. I would have preferred it had they written that as ascending and descending. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. The up and down is... It's a little more grammatically correct Mm -hmm. and... Just I'm you're trying to appeal to high school kids. Don't dumb them down. Speak their language. You're asking them to do some musical things. You know, do it in adult language or something. Yes. All right. Four or more major scales, two octaves, ascending and descending. Okay. Here's a, I need two octave scales up and down. Here's here's one. <laughs> Okay, here's another one. Uh, so it's another uh, major scale, is what mm-hmm. you're saying. Yay. All right. So there's major scales. What's the next one? Uh, four or more minor scales. Right. Two octaves, ascending and descending. Same thing, minor scales. All right, here's one. You like that one? Yeah. Thank you. That was a, <laughs> a, a melodic minor scale. Okay. <laughs> I think that's four. That was four minor, minor scales. Okay. Uh-huh. What's the next one? Now, just to be clear, like it, if somebody were had a saxophone, mm-hmm. it would have done the same thing that you're doing on the cu- guitar, just on their instrument. The... Exactly. Okay. And in, in fact, here's the, the tr- trick in there. And um, when, uh, when I play, for example, the 
C major scale. We, mm-hmm. we dealt with that one last week. The simplest scale in the world is the all the white keys on the piano. C major scale. There it is. To the extent of my instrument in the fingering position that I'm at, that's an octave plus three or four notes on each side. If I simply start that scale on the A instead of the C, that's a minor scale. Nice. So it's the same thing. The C and the A minor, are mm-hmm. they're called the relative major and minor mm-hmm. of each other. They mm-hmm. share the same notes. And so when you look at the key signature on the piece of music, it says uh, no sharps or flats. You don't know yet if it's in the key C or A minor. It could mm-hmm. be either one. The notes are all the same. We just start on a different place when we define the scale. So there's the minor scales, major scales. Mm-hmm. What's next? Chromatic scale, two octave minimum, ascending and descending. All right. Chromatic, you know what that means? <laughs> Lots of colors. I'm That's kidding. right. Yeah. Well, what does it mean in, in, in color sense? Mm-hmm. So yeah. Just no, two of the colors? Not monochromatic. Mono meaning one. Several colors. All the colors. Mm-hmm. Yes. Is like it, the colors uh, of Benetton. <laughs> Remember that? Yeah, I do. Yeah. That, no, you don't. Do you? It was an album by Pink. <laughs> the colors of Benetton. Oh, that was that detective show in the 70s. No. Oh, with, the, with the chick. Good guess. With, the with, colors of Benetton. Benetton was like a clothier that the, all of their marketing kind of prided themselves in, in showing every single race. And then their, this was in the 80s. And their colors, oh, their clothing the colors. was. Colors. Was lots of different colors. Their clothing mm. came in all these different bright colors. It's very eighties. So it's like all about us, right? The, the colors, color, the clothing, big Benetton. deal. But it's all about us because <laughs> we're. Mm. Speaking of detective shows in the seventies yeah. with with hot chicks on them, we were talking about you know who Angie Dickinson. Oh gosh, you know who she is? She's like a grown up, classier Britney Spears. She is kind of. Yeah, That's she's got call. that hair. Yeah, she's got that kind of that body style and mm-hmm. everything. She's kind of sexy, but mm-hmm. uh, very sexy. And Brittany is too, but you just got that whole trashy looking, <laughs> you know, the trailer right. park thing for mm-hmm. her. I don't know. So. It's the blonde with the brown eyes. Yeah, somehow. something. Yeah. Wow. All right, chromatic scale, two octaves up and down the scale. Uh, okay, sure we go. <laughs> And, and was that expanded in any way because you're a pro? Well. Or was that normal? Chromatic means all the notes. Oh, okay. So I simply just started anywhere and just started playing every note, and I went up until it was as comfortably out of kind of finger range. Mm-hmm. I was about where my hand was going to about hit the guitar and stuff. and So it's just you just go as far as you can. It's, so it's just every note, mm-hmm. black, white on the piano. Don't okay. skip any of that kind of business. That's what chromatic means. Okay. There's no key to chromatic. It's just every note. Okay, what's okay. next? Concert B flat blues scale. All right. Now, what do you what do they mean by concert? Um, remember that uh, some instruments, including all the saxophones, primarily the uh, upper saxophones, they transpose uh, when the world is playing uh, B flat in concert pitch. Mm-hmm. Means true to pitch, a uh, uh, tenor sax player would have to play in the key of C. Mm. He has to play a whole step higher. Mm, I see. They, they simply do that so that when they score the instrument, when they write the music for the instrument, they can put it conveniently within the staff. Mm-hmm. You don't have to write a whole bunch of ledger lines above or below. Even the guitar is a transposing instrument, but it transposes an octave, so we don't really think about it. When we play what looks like a middle C on the musical score on a guitar, we're playing actually a note which is an octave down from the real middle C. Mm-hmm. And many instruments are that way, piccolos and things like that. You <laughs> could never read piccolo music. It would have like 15 ledger lines above the staff, you know, <laughs> so you just tra- you just say everything's up two octaves or whatever they do. Do you, you teach know, pi- piccolo? Uh, I, I want it. I wanted I a, to take up the piccolo. <laughs> I have a flute uh, guy that comes in. Uh, I teach him jazz phrasing. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm not like a flute 
expert or anything like that. So you <laughs> want a, a concert B flat. That's what concert means. So it means whatever horn you're playing, uh, alto horn would have to play uh, G. Uh, tenor horn would have to play a C. So obviously, if that's your instrument, you have to know that. Sure. And okay. it's real simple to know that. Okay. And, and pl- the point about it in jazz is people are going to go, hey, let's play B-flat blues, and you need to know. All the cat means I play in C, mm-hmm. or I play in G, whatever my particular instrument is. Uh, trumpets, transpose, all, all the uh, wind instruments transpose until you get to the low instruments, tubas and things like that. Mm-hmm. So uh, here is a concert B-flat blues scale. That's all there is to it. Wow. It's simply a collection of notes just like any scale, and it, they've determined to call it a blues scale. It's not a regular major scale. Here's a major scale. And here's that blues scale. No. It only has six notes. Mm-hmm. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then we start over again at the octave. Or major scale is eight. Four, five, six, seven. Uh, seven, right. eight. Uh-huh. All right. So that's a B flat blues scale, and I think the next one, don't they say improvise? On... An improvisation to the B flat blues scale. All right, and, and that one too, I I kind of quirked a little bit at the grammar over a B flat blues. Would, right, it should would be, be the over. right way to say mm-hmm. that. Not over, not to the scale. Mm-hmm. The scale's what I'm going to do. But the you're going to play B flat blues or the track or mm-hmm. something, you know, but I'm going to play over that. But anyway, so they got a little grammar thing going on there. But even the school <laughs> they're at the teacher. Uh all right. So I'm I got a backing track uh, and it's B flat blues and I'll play it for a while and I'll just stop it for a while because they usually just go on and go on forever. So let's Especially see what happens. Especially blues, jeez. Uh, you never know. It, well, that'd be the point. I got to be good to keep your attention for 11 choruses of it when it's blues. But <laughs> here I am now auditioning. I've played a B flat uh, blues scale, right? Now they want me to play blues over a B flat blues. So here's a B flat blues and I will use that scale. Simplify it and just play that scale now. Same thing, I'm just swinging the rhythm now. This is what you want to do in your audition. now.
going to stop there because that's nice. It'll just go on forever everything. and ever. Yeah, it does go on forever and ever. And almost always, what they're going to want you to do is, did you like that? I did. I loved it. Thanks. I always love to you. hear you play. <laughs> they, they, they want you to uh, play the solo, and then they want you to play the chords when you're a guitarist. Mm-hmm. Um, when you're a sax player, you, you clearly you can't play the chords, so you got to figure out a little thing when it's time for you to sit out. If it's the type of band where you are allowed to do this, to play some things in the background, the little things that I was doing, like when I was just going, that's just two notes. I'm not really playing a big chord. I'm just going, two, so that sax player can go. See, he could do all those little things mm-hmm. in between my solo or somebody else's solo, that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So they want you to think like that and, and see what you can come up with and play that. So so they're soloing in B flat. Now, do you think in the in the audition, are they going to provide you the tra- the backing track? Yeah, they could or not, or you could bring it or they'll play it. It's simple enough. They'll play it. You know, the guy will play it for real on a piano something like oh, that. It's 12 bar blues. It's very, very simple. But, um, yeah. And they'll have a million. They just have some students come just stick their head out the door and say, Hey, a couple guys come in and play 12 bar blues. And, mm-hmm, you know, that's, sure. It's simple. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, you could bring it or whatever you want. It wouldn't be any problem. And they're all the same. So it doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're all the same format and keys and all that kind of stuff. So, all right. So what's next on the, uh, audition? One prepared selection of a jazz chart of your choice. What is they? What do they mean by chart? Do they mean like a piece of music? Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. And that's what you call a chart. It's mm-hmm. a it's a literally a chart of what. Uh, it's called it probably a chart for a good reason. It's not note for note what you have to play. Mm. It's a chart outlining. Here's the chords, sorta. You can experiment with the chords a little bit if you know some substitutes for these. And uh, here's the melody. They usually give you the straight melody. And so if you're Ella Fitzgerald, you're not going to go, oh, say, you're going to go, oh, but a baby, you know, you're going to do whatever you do and you're Mariah Carey and whoever you are. And so they'll give you the straight melody. If it's got lyrics, they'll give you that. They'll give you the chords. And uh, then they'll mention usually the the time and the the key and stuff like that. Of course, the time could be anything. You could choose to do it as a Latin or something, whatever song you're doing, or choose to do it really fast or slow or whatever you want to do. So it's a chart. That's what they call a chart. So they want you to do, uh, say it again, please. Um, One prepared selection of a jazz chart of your choice. Okay. So um, we did a B-flat blues scale, right? Mm -hmm. We improvised over B-flat. The next thing I want you to do, young person who's going to audition, is play Autumn Leaves in B-flat. Oh, my gosh. Or G minor. It's the same thing. You've You've got the chart. Mm-hmm. In front of you, that's the actual lead sheet from the the fake book, from the real book that you sure. would have if you were looking at somebody called that. And they'd say, "Turn to page whatever." We're gonna or they nobody needs to turn to the page. Everybody can play Autumn Leaves in G minor, but that's the famous key that it needs to be in, and it's in this key for that reason. You've just been auditioning for the last I don't know how many minutes on this B flat thing. Mm-hmm. Keep playing in B flat, and mm-hmm. that's exactly sure. what Autumn Leaves is. You're you're into that mental mode, mm-hmm. and they want to see that. In this case, this is a high school, so they're not looking for an, any stage band. They're not looking for a fabulous soloist. They're looking for somebody who can fit in with the other people, and understand a little bit about the terminology, so that we don't have to like you're not like taking sax lessons during the the thing you are lending your talents to the thing Mm -hmm. so they want to see that you are able to comprehend some of the terms and stuff like that and when we say play in b flat do you know what that means and junk like that so once you get into that mode stay in that mode stay in that musician not intellectual mode but yeah tell me what to play b flat okay Mm -hmm. so play autumn leaves in b flat or g minor and there's a million places you can download them and practice them, and it will be exactly the same scale that you just got done playing on mm-hmm. that other thing. If it's, somebody just hated Autumn Leaves, would there be another choice? Only 10,000, yes. <laughs> yes. But nice. don't hate anything right. musically. You are going right. to need to play Autumn Leaves. If you hate Autumn Leaves, 
don't become be a, a plumber. <laughs> don't be a musician of any kind. Right, yeah. It is a, I mean, it's just a staple. You have to play it. You can't hate any music. It's not productive to mm. the music concept mm-hmm. here. You can do whatever you want as the intellectual thinking adult thing and hate stuff, but when you're auditioning, that's not a concept. So Autumn Leaves can use exactly that same so, uh, scale and uh, chords and everything we've just been doing in the other stuff. It uh, is a classic. These guys will know how it's supposed to sound. You should have been practicing it for a long time already because it is part of the canon that you need to know. It's like the top 20 songs that you're going to have to know in all these auditions. It's going to be in every jam session you ever play in and all that kind of stuff. So learn this song and what they're always going to want. Again, in this case, we're going to add one more component to it. The first time through, play the melody Mm -hmm. pretty straight so that we establish for everybody you know what the song sounds like Mm -hmm. and that you can simply play the melody. That's more difficult than it sometimes sounds. Mm -hmm. It's sometimes easier to improvise than to play the exact notes called for. Well, and maybe, you know, on a, one of those instruments that does not allow chords, maybe it is harder, you know, when you're only playing one note at a time and you're playing the melody and it goes a certain way, there, there is no improvisation. You have to play it. And the melody is the melody of a known song, you know? Right. And that, that's exactly what they're wanting mm-hmm. you to sure. demonstrate. Yeah. So, so you're play saying, the, yeah, okay, go ahead. Play the melody straight mm-hmm. the first time through. Improvise the second time through. Comp the third time through. Vamp, comp. That was the term you asked about vamping. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Comping is, vamping is a little bit different. Comping means to play the chords. Mm-hmm. And again, on a saxophone, you're not playing chords, but you're going to play a little note here and there that's part of the chord that belongs at that point Mm -hmm. because only the guitar and the piano can do that little little business. But you as a sax can go that little thing right there once in a while. So melody, solo, comp. I will do that in this autumn leaves. Mm -hmm. Now that something happens in this autumn leaves that happens in a lot of these tracks, this is a computer generated track. So it's, just cranking out autumn leaves for as long as until the guy just stops the thing. Right. They go for five minutes and they nearly never have an end. Even when they have an end, it's kind of cheesy. So you've heard this before when I've played, it just stops in the middle of nowhere. Mm -hmm. So what I will do is for one, when I get done with my three things, the melody, the solo, and then the comping, I think there may be another verse or chorus or something left over. So I'll play some more Mm -hmm. of something. I don't know what exactly, but, when it comes to the end, I'll see if I can just draw the, right through and finish it. Mm, okay. Instead of the awkward, weird ending that the, the just stopping the tape in the middle of nowhere, I'll mm-hmm. see if I can carry that out because I'm trying to impress the judges. That's right. I want them to see that I'm thinking like a musician, not like a worried kid or something sure. like that. All right. So, Autumn Leaves, say it in French for us. Le fuel mort. Ooh, la la. Ooh, la la. In Mon the key of G minor at 120. Here it is. A little intro there.
Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Was that okay? <laughs> that was awesome. Uh, thank you. And I have to say, like, I didn't really even notice when the backing track stopped. And mm -hmm. so you finished it beautifully. Merci. Beaucoup. Beaucoup. <laughs> Lots of beaucoups Il in there. Pas de quoi. And I think the last one is sight read something. And I, of course, I can't do that on the radio. But I assure you, I'm a good sight writer, uh, sight writer reader. Not Meaning talker, they're going to say, hey, here's this uh, piece of music. Looks just like what you got there. Yeah, right, they'll sure. give you a chart like that, and I'll okay. say, here, play this. And, uh, and uh, Actually, if you look at that chart, um, th there's something really telling about that. Look at, Don't think about any kind of letters and Gs and B-flats and anything, but just look at the whole collection of blurbage, the, the ink on the first couple of things. It goes, ba-da-da-da, and then right after it, ba-da-da-da. And then ba da 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 ba da da da. See all those little blobs of black dots? Mm -hmm. They just do 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 do. They climb and then they go down just one little step and right. then da 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 da. Okay. And there's the whole song. Boo do 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 boo do 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 boo do 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 boo do do do. We're just playing that scale. Mm -hmm. Do re mi fa sol la ti. We're starting on the six, seven, eight, no, one, nine, mm -hmm. whatever. And da 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 ba da da da. And we're just going down. Each one is one, two, three, four notes. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And we just step right down the scale. Mm -hmm. It's just that simple. And everything I played there was exactly that. It was that scale. And I, I'm comfortable playing the scale. Why? Because I played it once or twice. So mm -hmm. I can skip around. And so when it sounds like I'm being all genius and inventive and stuff, I'm just putting my fingers down in exactly the same place. I would do it if I went do, re, mi, fa, so. But I'm skipping. And I'm mm -hmm. going, hey, go stick it over here and play mm -hmm. it quick. And mm -hmm. then go play it long. And then go down here and play something mm -hmm. longer and you know, all that. I'm just messing around. So thinking about, like, say this is a kid that's a freshman. And so he's mm -hmm. probably 14. In high school, okay. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, he's probably, let's say he's, whatever, a sax. Mm -hmm. I mean, how long do you think a kid has been playing or, or taking lessons before they're at the, kind of the stage? Sure. They didn't just start last week. Right. That's for sure. They, the the answer is is like, it could be they could start last week, and it could be they've been playing 
you could be a 40 year old adult and, Mm -hmm. and not really grasp that. The simple answer is it's going to be easier for this kid because all I got to memorize is these, uh, in this case, six notes, but seven notes of a scale. Mm -hmm. I just got to learn how to play this B flat scale on my horn. That's all. Hey, seven notes. Okay. Da, 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 da. Play that for a while every day few minutes then mm-hmm. come in later and do it again pretty soon you're going to be just as good as that as lisa and lumpy mm-hmm. are at driving cars and mm-hmm. flipping on light switches and washing your feet and whatever it is that you do all day long driving like every time i drive to the strip club you know you, i don't need to know <laughs> which i can sitting there talking to my blow-up doll all the way right I don't, sure I don't need to know the street names my gps doesn't need to tell me Speaking of which, my GPS doesn't need to tell me that. That's a weird thing to me. This this concept. Talking I've, GPS. Well, I've had people come over, you know, like for to the studio for a sure. lesson and stuff, <clears throat> and and I I tell them, here's my address, and it shows up on Google and everything, just fine, no problem. This mm-hmm. house has been here for forty years, and right. it's, you know, it's marked on the curb and the it's all that kind of stuff. Yeah. I even tell them there's a camouflage van out front. Right. You know, so you can't really <laughs> miss it. The pizza guys love that. I mm-hmm. put that in the comments, you mm-hmm. know, at the bottom of the order. So invariably I will see people and I'll go out front, like you know I do. I, I sure. walk out front with my dog and I, I greet the people. It's it's actually kind of a test if they hate dogs. I'm Pretty sure we're right. not going to get along. Right. Pretty sure it's not going to work mm-hmm. out. Misa? Or what do you think? Misa, that was my old dog. So <laughs> there'll be people driving down the street, and I know it's them because right. it's somebody I don't recognize, and you can see them, you know, looking all right, over. Right, creeping. Yeah. And I'm going, that's got to be you. And you can see them, they're, and they're going, turn left, and 100, and they end up, like, down the street a couple blocks. And, you know, I don't know where everybody else lives, but outside of Salt Lake City... <laughs> Phoenix right. is like the easiest sure, to navigate. Sure, you know, grid. 13th Street is, is the 1300 block and all that right, kind sure. of stuff. Yeah. You know? So if you live totally at, at you know, at 108 something, you're between 1st Street and 2nd Street. Right, sure. It's just that you don't have to go down to 7th Street and keep looking for the number right. on the curb. The art of actually knowing how to get somewhere is oh. being taken over by whatever her name is. I wonder if it's, a, is it an art or is it rote memory? Like playing a saxophone i think actually um there's an act i think there's an actual talent i know we talk about this word talent it's it's magic some people just know where to go the, and the others navigation thing you're yeah talking about? okay it's like an internal navigation and some people do not have that chris my darling husband chris does not have that i call him a wrong way thelma if hmm. we go into Wrong way, Thelma? Yeah, say we go into a neighborhood and then there's a parking <laughs> lot. And we park and we, we go there and we come out. He will turn the exact opposite way that we came from. Oh, I hate that. And so, yeah, it's just it's it's like so he's not easy. paying attention. Oh, God, it's so easy. It's like, where are you going? Um, and I've tried both ways. You know, like we're going to a place in, say, Old Town that we've been to several times, several, several times. And, uh, uh, the turn is what would be west of Scottsdale Road, and he just kind of keeps going. I just, I'm just quiet. I'm like, he'll figure it out. We're going to that place over there, and we basically just passed it. Wait, you guys drive your own car to Scottsdale? You don't take a limo? <laughs> no. Jeez, you simpletons. And uh, so then he's like, "Well, where am I going?" Uh, and he, oh, I passed the turn. I'm like, "Yep." He goes, "Why didn't you tell me?" But if I try to tell Ooh. him, like, "Hey, turn here. Don't tell me where to go," you know, so. Oh, just, those men. I can't win for losing. That's the only reason I'm not gay. <laughs> those stupid men and their directions. Except for Eddie, what's his name? Oh. Uh, <laughs> Daniels. Eddie Daniels. Oh, my the God. The world's most handsome didn't, clarinet player. I know it. Didn't yeah. you love my email? Yes, I did. Yeah. <laughs> Lumpy and Eddie uh, sitting yeah, in a tree. Yeah. yes, society. That guy has been a serious clarinet player for... Uh, as long as I have been in music, mm-hmm. I mean, that from the 60s and stuff mm-hmm. like that, I, I can remember I like him shop. doing the Tonight Show and mm-hmm. stuff like that. Yeah, that shop is a, it's in Canada. It's a place that makes, uh, if you saw his beautiful clarinet, he's got a, like a rosewood clarinet. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, they're, they're beautiful uh, instruments, that, that really designer instruments. And they're mm-hmm. not really that expensive, which is a neat thing. You know, a uh, an instrument that you play... Uh, like a violinist down here in the symphony, they're going to spend like 20 grand on an instrument. Wow. 
It's not like a guitar. You can get a great guitar for two thousand dollars. You know, fabulous guitar for mm-hmm. for that. Anything above that is just got diamonds and gold right. and stuff mm-hmm. on it. But but instruments are orchestra instruments are different. So um, these you can buy a clarinet from these guys that's like only five or six or eight grand, mm-hmm. and it's gorgeous, like you see in that video of that guy playing gold uh, keys and cocobolo wood and stuff like that. Wow. But yeah, that guy's been playing forever, straight and uh, you know, long hair music and jazz and all sorts of stuff. He's, he's famous for all the Bach concertos and stuff. For some reason, all the Bach uh, concertos, a concerto is a uh, like a solo piece mm-hmm. that the violinist or whoever would play with the orchestra accompanying them. Mm-hmm. Um, so the Bach concertos have become famous pieces for everybody. Uh, the cellos and clarinets and everybody who wants to work on the technically difficult stuff, especially fast playing. Mm -hmm. So every time you see that video of that guy, for example, the opening is all that fast business. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what that is. It's all that Bach business. Bach was like making gymnastic things for, (laughs) for, uh, for vocalists or for instrumentalists back then. How did you run across that? I mean, there's hundreds of thousands of millions of things on YouTube, but how did you happen to run across that? Well, my friend, my friend, Mr. Tube, Mm -hmm. he said, Lumpy, based on your likes, you might like this. (gasps) No. And I said, well, sons of guns. (laughs) And, and oddly enough, the next day, my friend Jeff Bezos said, while you're shopping here at Amazon, you might like this. And I can see the guy's albums and stuff right. start showing up. Here, on buy my... a clarinet. Mm-hmm. By right. the way, I, we <laughs> see that on another website you're interested in clarinets. So here you are. So uh, you just never cookies. know how that works. So, All right. So there's the deal about auditioning. Don't look at auditioning as you have to pass some kind of test. It's not a competition to see can we get the best people? It's an opportunity for you to find out what they're going to want and what language they're going to speak and for them to find out if they're speaking the same language to you, the prospective player and stuff. The stuff we're going to ask you to do in this band that you're auditioning for, the stage band or the orchestra or whatever, is not anything strangely, weirdly difficult. We're going to ask you to play some relatively simple parts. We're going to give you the music, and we want to make sure that you know how to play a G on your horn when it says to play a G on the paper. It's really that simple, and that's kind of what we're testing in an audition is we want to see are you mentally, psychologically, socially self-confident enough to sit in an ensemble and carry a part. Sure. Yeah. That's what it's Ensemble. About. That's very key. That yeah. was a, the term in mm-hmm. the audition there at Berkeley. Sure. Um, must be able to play in an ensemble. And the smaller the ensemble, the more critical that can get. If you're in an uh, orchestra with seven other clarinets, seven other second clarinets, you know, a lot sure. of something like that versus you're in a stage band, there's only two trumpets. Right. You know, or there's only one of your kind of saxophone. There's an alto and a tenor and a baritone, something like that. So you're the only alto guy or the only tenor guy or something like that. Right. So your so, part's key. Yeah. It's more critical than if you had six of you. Sure. You could kind of worry a little bit less. And, and, and that's the same concept there is exactly why I always say it's a good idea for young kids to be in the choir. Even if you're not a singer, if you want to play shoegazer guitar or something, be in the choir because there's a there's a bunch of you, there's thirty of you, mm-hmm. and that means there's there's like eight or ten of you all singing the same note theoretically. Mm-hmm. So the, the couple that aren't singing the right note, you can kind of ignore them, and somebody's going to basically be there, and you're kind of learning that mm-hmm. being in a choir. Where if they suddenly stuck you in a barbershop quartet, right. where you're the only tenor, you know, it's really critical. So you don't want to jump into that. So don't look at an audition like that. Look at an audition like it's it's your chance to demonstrate that that what you do know and and what you and how flexible. Yeah, there they, you, go. you know they're looking for flexibility here. Mm-hmm. We kind of need you to know this set of things. Mm-hmm. We want to see see that you know that. We want to hear <clears throat> that you know that. Sure. And then, um, and here's an example of that. They they ask you for a B flat blues scale is that what they call that mm-hmm. 
that's kind of an obscure term. There's a B flat scale. There's a B flat major and minor pentatonic scale. There's a B flat bebop scale. And then there's a B flat blues scale. And kind of all and of them. Don't forget the reggae. <laughs> they, they could, I, there probably is. All of them could work over blues. Mm -hmm. So the cool thing to do, and here, use this, kids, even if you already know this. You, you don't know this. Who am I kidding? <laughs> but say this when you go in. <clears throat> if you're going to this audition here and they go, all right, uh, Tyler, we'd like you to play a B-flat blues scale. And then you answer, okay. Do you mean uh, the one that's a B-flat minor pentatonic with a flat five added? <laughs> that's exactly what it is. Nice. You know. So the minute you do that, they go, yeah, I don't really care if you can play it or not. You know what it is. Right. You got the job. That's fine. <laughs> And so you get the you get the point, and and that could be a real. I would genuinely ask that question because that's a kind of a little bit of an ambiguous, a, what do they say, a blues scale. Mm -hmm. It's not quite as defined as some other scales. So mm -hmm. I'd want to clarify for them, uh, for me. Mm -hmm. Plus, it's a good little trick in the audition to say it sounds so like you get know some what you're brownie doing. points right but up front. You notice the first thing I said when they said, "Can you play this?" I said, "Yes, mm -hmm. yes, I can." Then I wanted to clarify, and I said, yes. You mean the one that's a minor pentatonic with a flat five added? Okay. Nice. That would be exactly how you do it on the gig. You know, they'd say, let's play a B-flat blues, and you'd say that real quick, and in two seconds I've cleared up any kind of ambiguousness, and mm -hmm, I sure. get it now, and I'll be able to play what you want, and that's cool. So, so you ready to go audition? Let's go. I am, yes. Sign, <laughs> put on your go, dress like a high school girl. <laughs> and uh, we'll go over here suit to and tie. wherever. And, yeah, they all wear uniforms and stuff. Now. You got any of those left over, the little Catholic schoolgirl stuff? I did not go to Catholic school. I never wore a uniform. Oh, you can buy them over here at the at the sex shop. Right. You know? <laughs> I know. It's like one-time use only, though, I think. Right. Ooh. They're, they're mm -hmm. not real strongly made. You're supposed to just wear them right. for one night. Right, sure. And then, yeah, disposable. The hotel pack. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let's take a break. 